Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth. We've got an empty house today. The door's just shut. Sweeney, bar that door. Molly, put on another cup of coffee. Let's get this show on the road. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 48th week. We've got a full house today, not a chair to spare. I am Michael Laughlin, your host. You can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out the written show notes on my blog. That'll help you with some information that I didn't include in the uh, audio broadcast. And you can search all of our podcasts and broadcasts by typing in any search term that you'd like. Yes, it's another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. You can also phone me at 816-256-3360 to leave your comments on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. And by the way, be sure to tune in to our sister podcast, The History of the Irish in America series. Last week, we talked with Irish dancer Stephanie Mahoney uh, from an interview we did at Brown's Irish Festival this summer. We also made note of the first ever video going up on uh, YouTube that I've made. It's just a little bit of practice there, but it talks about the Irish in, Mus- in Missouri. So it was a good practice note, but expect some more on that front. And of course, like I mentioned uh, two weeks ago on this broadcast, we have a third broadcast series coming up on Irish song and recitation. So I've got the first 10 of them sort of put together i'm trying to polish them off right now and i'll get that one started and we may alternate uh, every third week with that uh, podcast coming up with our other two podcasts boy it's getting complicated and i just got too much going on but we've got three separate uh, broadcasts now one on irish families one on the irish in america which is focusing on missouri irish right now and one on irish song and recitation so If you've got any recitations you'd like to send in and submit, just call in on that phone line and we'll uh, record them and see if we can't get them on the air. Let's help us educate ourselves here, folks. That would be a great deal. Now, be sure to subscribe to all three of those broadcasts to stay in touch. And why would you do that? That's because every day is a holiday at the Irish Roots Cafe. Well, let's take a look at today's action. Among today's topics are the Irish family name of the week is McKinney and Kinney. Families of County Cork is the book for the day. And what about Patty Whacking in New Hampshire? We'll see where you can read more about that. And f- did you know that there are 425,000 New Zealand Irish? And let me see, we've got family searches for Fitchy, Kane, Cullen, and Cullity. Boy, take a look at all those Irish language classes in New York. We've got a few of them here. That's interesting. And let me see, the last little note I'll make is on the 1911 Dublin Census. It's going online, folks, so if you've got some Dublin research to do, there's another resource. Now let me see our book of the week. The book of the week this week is The Families of County Cork, Ireland. That's part of our 28-29 volume set on uh, Irish families and genealogy notes that I put together some time back. And this is one of two volumes in that series on County Cork. It's the larger volume, and it's hardbound, so it's the better of the two. And, of course, it'll cost you a little bit more, too. But here's a – I've got – I'll put a full extract on – on the blog so you can go and read it and i'll just give a few notes from that extract here now to let you know uh, some of the information you might run into and the extract i've got posted on our blog today talks about how the mccarthy's were generally noted as the most powerful family in county cork anciently and that's from the time of the norman invasions onward and they're cited uh, in the 12th century by o'heron as heroes of munsters Well, that's the province of Munster. And uh, they held continuous battle with those who came to settle and conquer the area. And they even held on to their title as princes of Desmond right down to the reign of Elizabeth. 
Now, you can find a lot of different fam- branches of the family, and that's common with a lot of Irish families, especially if they get uh, powerful and well-known. There'll be uh, not just one giant McCarthy family, but the same family will break up into different seps and maybe cover little different areas in the county or could even move to another county. Uh, the McCarthy Moore was probably the most noted that I know of. And there's also the McCarthy Ray, and they were princes of Carberry. And the McCarthys just have a, a wide selection of castles that they held over time in counties Cork and County Kerry. Uh, I know that because they helped foster the Donahues moving into County Kerry way back uh, a thousand years ago or, or so. Uh, and I also have a note on there about the inauguration of an Irish chieftain. And this one's about McCarthy Moore and how uh, uh, O'Sullivan Moore and O'Donohue Moore, who were fellow Eugenian chieftains, uh, did the inauguration for the McCarthy. Coming up later this episode, where can you find a blog entitled Patty Whacking in New Hampshire? And should that word be used in children's songs? I think not, but more about that on the website. We'll give you a note later. Should be time to move to our member search list. Let's see. Let's just take uh, seven samples today of uh, members and uh, interested parties here. Janice, Janeth K. Mastriani of Port Charlotte, Florida, is searching county down for Fitchie and Greenfield. John Fitchy married Agnes Greenfield in 1822 and came to the U.S. around 1829. And she's searching for his or her parents in Ireland, just like the rest of us. And if you're lucky enough to have done that, don't forget to reach out a helping hand to those of us who haven't found it yet. Number two, Kathy Cooper of Hedford County, Galway. She's searching for her family who lived in County Derry till the famine in the 1840s. That famine reached it, its worst in 1847, Kathy. And she's doing that, and she's looking for when they moved to Scotland as a result of the famine, it looks like. And her families are the Canes and the Cullens. Number three, Jane Ryan of Ben Lomond, California. And she's searching primarily for the Cullity family, C-U-L-L-I-T-Y. I wonder if that could be related to the Quilty family, just a different spelling. A C instead of a Q. Be worth looking up if you've got the time someday. And she's also looking for the Queeley family from the Dungarvan area and Murray and Murphy. Number four, a special thanks to Susan Reed of Dublin, Ohio, who ordered a whole carton full of our books this week. A grand scholar indeed. You got a real good library going there, uh, Susan. Carmel Beal of Charlestown, Australia. Your Cork book and Irish family's book are on the way. And number six, Robert Orton of Gig Harbor, Washington. Welcome as a new member. And it looks like you're searching for Fitzgerald, so if you want to send me any more information, uh, a short paragraph, I'll add it to your file so we know a little bit more. Uh, Number seven, Amy Goodrich of North Yorkshire in the U.K., your book has been sent as a gift to Ireland as you requested. That's right. You can actually order a book for us, and we can send it to somebody else as a gift. More than happy to do that. Just make your instructions very clear. And this is a good time to say thanks to all of our member be, members, because without you, these podcasts would not be possible. And remember that donations are accepted and sponsors are welcome. Now, what have we got going here from the worldwide email bag? Let's just take two today. We've got so much going on. Uh, One member of the week asks, what does black Irish mean? And that's actually the member who's looking for McKinney. And black Irish, there's so many definitions for that term, it's amazing. Some people say it meant an Irishman who had uh, dark eyes or black hair or a left-handed Irishman or the Dub Gaul. Uh, the, the Irishmen who were, uh, maybe it might have been referred to at one time uh, when the Vikings came and uh, attacked Ireland and some of them settled in Ireland. They were called the Dub Gaul, meaning the dark Irish. And that was a negative connotation at the, uh, for that particular term. 
And I've also seen even recently that uh, Irish who intermarried with uh, Native American Indians were called Black Irish. And there's actually been at least one book on that talking about the back, Black Irish in the uh, the Barbados, I think it was. Uh, in that in that instance, you're talking about the Black Irish, meaning Irish Irish names for people with uh, dark skin, which is very interesting. And you know, I think one day I've got I've got a book almost ready to go on the Black Irish. I think it might be time to put something out there. But that gives you an idea that there's no just one cut and dried answer. And some people say it's the survivors of the uh, Spanish Armada who crashed off the coast of Ireland so long ago. And uh, although there was very few of them that would have survived, that's for sure. Let me see. One more here. Let's just spin the hopper. What do we got? Here we go. Let me reach in there. Okay, it says, Mike, I've been through your entire website and cannot locate the periodical referenced in my surname search online for Journal of Irish Families. She says she might be a bit slow, but she can't find a specific link explaining what it is, if it's an online journal or a hard copy journal. And she's uh, really trying to reference the Carlos family. And there's a reference in the uh, journal on Carlos, apparently. And she wants to, me to help her out and wants to purchase it, whatever it is, if it is pertinent to my research. And, of course, that's the way we all feel. It's if it's helpful to my research. <laughs> the problem is you never know sometimes till it arrives and you open it up and look at it. Uh, the uh, Journal of Irish Families, a hard copy journal, I published that, uh, well, up until this last year or so, it was uh, six times a year. And now it's down to one or two. I can't remember which. And I'm, I'm just I'm putting so much data on the uh, web page that uh, that's taken up most of my time. And for members, I'm trying to put up more information for them, too, uh, sort of online information rather than through the mail. But I had it going for, uh, gosh, I don't know how many years, maybe 20 years altogether. Uh, could be more. Uh, but it was a hard copy journal. It's in several libraries. And uh, I've got the index posted on our free surname search on the web page, along with all our other books. And I'm starting to put uh, the contents of many of those journals on the members' pages uh, so you can go in there and do a search and, and maybe pull up one of those uh, references if you're looking for it. And remember, you can phone me anytime at 816-256-3360 and leave your order or a note on your family search or a message to, uh, to put out on the uh, broadcast here. Or just to ask a question I might be able to answer in the next podcast. Please don't ask questions that I can't answer because that just proves, <laughs> proves to be a waste of time. Uh, I'm just kidding, folks. Ask whatever you can and I'll do my best. I think it's about time to move on over here to the Irish family name of the week. And the name today will be McKinney and a little bit of Kenny as well. And today's family history uh, is in honor of member Jean Morell Franklin. And she tells us that uh, her great-grandmother McKinney always said the family was black Irish. And that's where we got our black Irish question. Uh, and before we move on to more about Kenny and Mick Kenny, I'll let you know on the next names we've got coming up are going to be Kavanaugh and Young. Uh, trying to take them roughly in the order of uh, when people joined as a member. And those two we've got lined up already. And now back to McKinney. I wouldn't want to cause you any frustration waiting for that. I know you'll be listening if you got McKinney in your family. And, of course, the, the name McKinney can be spelled with a Mac or O in front of it. And then the in, ending of the name can be just as confusing. Uh, the end of the name can just end simply with a Y or an EY or an IE. And you just got to keep your mind open and listen for the sound of the name. And, of course, the Mac and O. Kennys could have dropped the Mac and dropped the O, and they could have all become Kennys, which makes it confusing. And then there's some Kennys who come, come over to Ireland and settled from England. I'm not sure just where they might have been from. They could have been Irish in the first place, moved to England for a couple hundred years and come back, and everybody thought they were English. DNA would have to take care of that problem. I'm sure of that. Well, what about the Kennys in Ireland? Everybody wants to know about their family in Ireland. 
and the O'Kinnies are found in Keating's History of Ireland, and according to O'Dugan, they were chiefs of Moy Ith, and the name is one of the 100 most numerous surnames in all of Ireland, according to the 1890 uh, surname index. And as you might expect, it came from several distinct areas in Ireland, and it seems like uh, most often we find that they're found in the Galway and Roscommon area as a sept of the uh, High Many, and they originally had an O before the name. Now, in the north, in the province of Ulster in Ireland, the name is found most anciently in our records we've got on hand here in, in counties Tyrone and Down, and they may also come from an Irish family of O'Coin or O'Kinney, uh, but that's unproven. It's a theory you got to at least mention those theories. I can't research them all, but there's one possibility. And the family name is found as a chief clan in County Louth as McKinney. And the McKinneys or Keenies, sometimes uh, K-E-A-N-E-Y instead of K-I-N-N-E-Y, uh, are found mentioned in uh, County Leitrim in ancient times. And actually, the spelling of K-E-N-N-E-Y is one of the most common found in Leitrim. And like I said before, some of those families can come from England. Uh, for example, one English family from Somerset owned lands in County Galway and Roscommon for a while. As well as, un so you're going to find them in, are on those records, and you're all going to so going to find some uh, Irish kinnies in that area. So you've got to sort out the families makes it so much fun and lastly we'll just note that the birth index of 1890 found the name of mckinney listed with 42 births in counties antrim and tyrone let me see well i mean i'll check the irish book of arms we'll see just what if any reference in the irish book of arms there are and we find two reference to the kinney family one was kenny herbert of castle island county Kerry. And the other was Fitzgerald Kinney of Kilcloger, County Galway. And on both of these arms, you think the families are going to be sort of related because there's a scroll being held above the coat of arms there with an arm holding them. I wonder if that was a sacred scroll. I don't know. Maybe only a family member would know the answer to that. It's not for me to say. But that sort of links those two together, I would think. And that may be a Kinney family from... Uh, from England that settled in Ireland because they sure were the ones more likely to get a coat of arms. Some of those Irish rebels, boy, they'd be pretty lucky to get anything uh, back in the old days. Okay, and now just to finish it up, everybody ought to at least have already gone to the free uh, Master Index search of Irish names at irishroots.com. And if you did that for the Kenny and Mick Kenny name, here's just a few of the things you'd find out. Uh, you'd see that our county books for Antrim, Down, Roscommon, Tyrone, and Cavan and Leitrim uh, contain the name in the index. And uh, those are all McKinney or Mac. Mick, they're both McKinney's, uh, either with a E N N E Y or I N N E Y, in all 12 listings. And we also find the name in the Names of Irish Passengers to Ireland book. And we also find the Master Index to the Journal of American Irish Historical Society, which shows uh, James McKinney, uh, two John McKinneys, a uh, Sarah McKinney, and Thomas McKinney. And just as a, a reference on to the perhaps numerical relationship between the names, uh, K-E-N-N-E-Y came up 45 times in the search, and K-I-N-N-E-Y came up 38 times in the search, which sort of leads me to think that they're pretty in, pretty interchangeable and uh, you can't tell a whole lot just by uh, uh, the spelling of the uh, name. You're going to have to get some facts to back you up. Well, that does it for McKinney for the moment. It's time to move on to the website of the week. Well, the website today, hmm, Patty Whacking in New Hampshire. Now, paddy whacking's not a not a nice term to use, really, especially in the old days. But those days are behind us now. Just like the term paddy wagon, that wasn't a very good term. That was sort of an ethnic slur against the Irish, but we got over it. 
Uh, but this uh, blog that I've selected as the website of the uh, a week it explains a little bit about that. It's also a good historical blog, and at several times it gets into Irish history. It actually uh, has won several awards. It's by Janice A. Brown, and it includes some good notes, like I say, so you might want to check it out. Let me see now. Let's do some curious news and notes. We're going to focus one more time. I said I'd do this a couple of episodes ago. I wanted to look into a little bit more about the New Zealand Irish. And it looks like the Irish Society in Wellington, New Zealand, has 225 members. And they were formed way back in 1948. My gosh, that's before I was even born. And some 425,000 in the country at large claim Irish heritage. And, you know, there's 11,000 Irish that are first generation there today. The prime minister of the country, Helen Clark, well, her mother came from County Antrim in 1910 from Ireland. And Irishman Thomas Bracken composed the first national anthem for the country. So the Irish are making impact all over the world. We know that. And it's also noted... uh, that there's an undergraduate course in Irish studies, and it's said to be the only one in Australia or New Zealand. Well, that's interesting. I would have thought Australia would have had an uh, undergraduate course or two. We'll have to hear some more about that. If you've got information from Australia, let us know if there's any uh, uh, courses on Irish studies there. And you can read more about a recent visit by Ireland's president to New Zealand at uh, the RTE News website. I've got the uh, link on my blog if you want to read more. And the second curious news and note will just be a little genealogy tip. Uh, The 1911 Dublin Census is going online in autumn of 2007. And it's going to be posted on the National Archives of Ireland website. And they're going to digitize... uh, more and more from the 1901 and 1911 websites as time goes on. That's in the at the Irish Archives, and I got that link on the blog, too. Okay, what have we got? Let's move on down to uh, events and notes. Let me see. I got a note here came in the email. The Echo Nation pages has some photos from the Cavan Society of Philadelphia celebrating their 100th annual ball. You know, that could be a group to check out if you're hunting your family in County Cavan. And we have a note also that the Irish Echo newspaper has returned to the newsstands in Boston. Well, that's interesting. They've been gone from there for a while. I don't know how long. But I tell you what, that Cavan Society of Philadelphia, they might, of course, weren't alive in the 1800s, the folks there. But there might be a historian or two within the group, and there could be somebody who knows that portion of Cavan that you're researching in. So uh, that would be a good one to think about contacting. And, of course, Cavan's not that big a county, so you might be related to whoever you talk to if you came from Cavan. Let's move on down to Australia, Port Adelaide, Australia. There's a Celtic festival December 1st and December 2nd coming up. Celtica 07, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. are the hours, and you can find it on and near the waterfront. They celebrate the Celtic culture through song, dance, and music. Oh, I wish I could be there for that. If it wasn't such a long plane ride, I'd be on that. I'd be on that trip. And let me see, Chicago, November 17th, the Irish Heritage Singers hold their annual concert. And that's uh, entitled An Irish Journey, and that's at 7.30 at 4626 North Knox Avenue. More information on the webpage. And one last note, boy, we found at least four places advertised that were uh, given Irish language lessons in New York, uh, Glucksman Irish, Ireland House, and Rocky Sullivan's, and in Babylon on Thursdays at 7.45 at the AOH Hall. And in Selden, New York, on Tuesdays, uh, I've got uh, phone numbers and contact information on my blog. If you're interested, it'd sure be nice to to check out. This is Michael Laughlin at the Irish Roots Cafe signing off. Be sure to come see us next week. Reach me anytime at mike at irishroots.com or drop by the Irish Roots Cafe 24 hours a day.
If you'd like your book, music, or search featured here, mail to me at Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Send us your recitations, too. We're looking for that. I think we could have some fun if you all got involved. And don't forget to read the blog that goes with the podcast. I've got some web addresses there that will help you out. Uh, Leave a message at 816-256-3360 anytime. Love to get comments for the show. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we are open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members and away. 